everybody. Namaste. Um, today we're going to make something uh, quick. I don't know if it's going to be quick, but yeah, I have to make something because I'm hungry again from the park yoga stuff. Um, and I was going to go to the grocery store because there's not that many vegetables left, but I wanted to use what we have here first before I get some more stuff. So I looked in the fridge really quickly and what we have is... Um, Half a zucchini, a parsnip, turnip, whatever. We have some cilantro, some green onions, tomatoes, and um, sweet potato and onion. So we're going to try to make something with this. And we have some chickpeas here, so yeah, I'm going to try to do something with it. I think uh, soup will be okay. Let me just adjust this lens. Yeah, so I think the soup will be okay. And we'll have at it. So I'm going to start... Probably start by pan frying this. Um, I don't want to make it into a soup because... I don't know why, I just want to pan fry it, have something crispy, and it, it'll, it'll take faster if I pan fry it rather than boil it and then blend it and all this stuff. So I'll just give it a nice wash, washed, and I'll cut it up. So I got some new pans from Costco. This is a not, a not a sponsored video, by the way. It's, but I got new pans from Costco. And um, they're, they're like total nonstick, so they're ceramic. It's these ones, so they're um, ceramic on the inside. And I used them in Trinidad a while ago. Um, so I wanted to get something similar. So in Costco, they had it. And it... I've used it a few times now, my wife has used it as well a few times, and it doesn't stick at all. So, even without butter or oil and stuff, they actually have on the package that it's into, um, they had designed it so that you wouldn't even need butter or oil. And it's, it's great because with tofu, with my other pans, tofu stuck like crazy. But with this one, uh, the tofu is just sliding all over the place. So I'm just giving this some random chop up. I don't really care about the size too much. I just want it small enough to cook quickly. It's quite a bit, eh? So this is probably going to end up uh, being something or another like sweet potato fries ish but not at all like fries just pan fried sweet potatoes cool stuff so let me turn on this pan so i'll turn on the stove turn on the pan on high and i'm gonna put coconut oil in just one is out of the sake of um, habit and two because I, I, I do want some color on it and even though this pan is not it, even though this pan is non-stick and it will cook it just fine um, I kind of want a little bit of like oil and fat to this meal that's fine I don't know like two teaspoons of coconut oil is in there my hands a little wash and so while that heats up while the coconut oil melts I'll transfer this to a little bowl here so sweet potatoes um, they're really good high nutrients and all this stuff I, I believe in the UK they have 
made um, a normal potato, they, they're no longer counting that as one of your vegetables for the day. And they're counting that as a... They're, they're counting a potato as a starch now, rather than like a vegetable serving. But sweet potatoes, they, it's, a, it's a full serving of vegetables left. Um, so it's a good alternative if you want to have something potatoey, but also want to have a serving of vegetables. Okay, uh, we'll start cutting stuff for the soup. So let's get a pot here. And I'm just going to cut and throw stuff in as the pot gets hot. So I'll put you down again. So this pot, I'm going to turn it on high. So this is an onion, and I think I've showed this onion in the last video. Um, but again, if I had a garden, I would have loved to plant this. And I don't know if this is edible, but I'm going to try to eat it. And um, But I, I would have loved to plant this, but i got to cut it up now. So... Bye -bye. Let me know in the comments if you guys have tried using this before. Uh, it smells pretty good. So I'm going to peel this onion. In um, Buddhism or in, in meditation type of diets, where in monk diets or stuff like that, they try to avoid onions. And I, I looked it up a while ago. And it's kind of sad because there's some property of it where if it's consumed in excess, it um, it causes some sort of, like it, it makes you a little bit more agitated. Or, I mean, like, don't quote me at that. Like, I, I looked it up a long, long time ago. But I also saw that like that's only if it's consumed in excess. And because this is also cooked and not raw onions, then that chemical in there kind of um, diminishes. So monks and stuff can still eat onions like this. Okay, so this pan is not nonstick, so I'm going to add oil to this. About a tablespoon, and we'll lower it on the heat a little bit. Take it off, it's smoking too hot right now. Uh, on this pan, on the other hand, it, the oil is heated up. So I'm going to turn it down to about a medium and add in my sweet potatoes. And we'll just let that go. So I'll add in my onions to this. Open the window. So onion smell is quite strong. If you have any like fleece clothes or just clothes in general that you don't want to have an onion smell, um, I suggest you move it to a room and close the door. Okay, so while the onions are browning and doing stuff, um, We'll think about other vegetables. Uh, yeah, okay, so this turnip, I'll cut it. Um, if you can let me know in the comments below whether this is a turnip or a parsnip. I'm pretty sure it's a turnip. Or if it's interchangeable with parsnip or what. Uh, this is it, if you want a closer look. Yeah, cool. So we'll just give this a wash and a cut. Oh, well, you know what? I'm going to add ginger. Let's add some ginger. Uh, ginger. This is just like a, a little knob of ginger. Just going to give it a wash. I'm not going to peel it. And if it's for yourself and not for a restaurant type of things, I'm not sure why, why people peel ginger so much. Um, there's a lot of good stuff in ginger. Give the onions a little shake. Just 
put a bay leaf in it actually. This is a bay leaf. It goes in. So I'm going to put this ginger in hole like this because I want to be able to take it out after. And we'll go ahead and continue cutting this parsnip. Whoa, what's stuck with this? So if you can see here, there's like a hole in the parsnip. I don't want to eat it now. Yeah, it goes all the way, so I'm going to throw this away. I have another one here though. This is the last one, we'll see how this one's doing. This one has mold on it, so it's done. So no parsnips? Okay, so we'll just go with the zucchini. So we'll give it a good wash. Cut the end off. And cut it into little pieces. Doesn't have to be perfect pieces, it's just for yourself. So just have fun with it, cut it whatever shapes you want. And the sweet potatoes. Um, so you kind of have to check it in terms of the softness that you want because depending on what temperature you cook the outside will get brown when the inside is still hard so i'm going to add the zucchini in now so you kind of have to adjust the temperature with the sweet potatoes depending on what you want Give a soup pot a little mix. So my favorite way, my favorite way to eat zucchinis is um, on the barbecue. So when I was back home in Canada, um, we have a barbecue, and I like to. I used to like to put olive oil and salt, pepper, rosemary on zucchini and in zucchini like strips, then marinate it and then put it on the grill. So that was my favorite way of eating it before, but this has to do for now. Um, an alternative is, is I like to bake it the same way with garlic, olive oil, salt, pepper. I'll add some salt to this now. Olive oil, garlic, salt, pepper into the oven at a high temperature, like 400, 500. And it doesn't take long to cook. I mean, you can eat zucchini raw, but you're just trying to get that color in the barbecue. Okay, so while that's in the pot, I'm gonna um, blend some chickpea. Okay, and my battery is gonna die again. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just gonna, so while the battery is gonna charge, I'm going to take this can of chickpeas, I'm going to strain it, I'm going to wash wash it, and then I'm going to put it in a blender and blend it with about two cups of water, and hopefully the battery will be charged enough to, to see the rest of it. So uh, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so we're back. Uh, I don't know if the battery will last too long, um, but I'm almost done here anyway, so I just thought I'd show you before I finish. So I blended the chickpeas in a blender, and I blended it with garlic, two chilies, and half a block of vegetable cube, like a vegetable stock cube. This is browning up nicely. This, I don't know what's happened to this. It's, the pan doesn't seem to be very hot. But if you can see here, there's like brown bits. And you can see there's brownness on the bottom of the pan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use... I'm going to use uh, vinegar to lift that flavor from the bottom of the pan. So I have here um, apple cider vinegar. You can use any vinegar you want. If you have white wine, that'll be really good too. 
I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but that lifted up the brownness from the pan. And that's just all caramelized flavor bits that are really good to lift up so you can have it in your soup. So put that back. Yeah, so, okay, so now I'll take this uh, mixture of chickpeas and garlic, vegetable cube, and chili. There's no salt um, yet. So I, I'll add in the salt. So, let so, um, me get down so I can see. So this, this just goes straight in. And I will need to add in some more water quickly because I'm just uh, changing my microphone here. Okay, so um, that wasn't recorded. So yeah, so now I just turned on my microphone and um, we're back on after that battery break. But it should be fine. So. I will need to add in water almost immediately when I add in the chickpeas mixture because chickpea, any bean uh, that's been blended has a real high tendency to stick to the bottom and burn. So I just added some more water to that. So this is what it looks like now. And I'm just going to bring it to a, back to a boil. Add in some cilantro and some miso and it will be done. But before all that happens, I'm going to taste it. So that I can adjust salt or seasoning or whatever. It needs uh, salt and seasoning. <laughs> so, uh, for the seasoning, I'm gonna just add miso. This is just miso paste. I use miso in mostly everything I make. And if you guys can find it, that'll be awesome because um, it really adds this umami flavor. And especially for a vegetarian or vegan or whatever that would normally get the umami from meat or something like that. Um, this is kind of a good replacement for that uh, tongue, mouth, feel flavor. This is about a teaspoon. Just shake that in. I ordered uh, some more miso today from Amazon, as well as noodles, rice noodles, uh, black rice noodles. And I'm pretty excited for that because I really like eating noodle soup. So maybe one of these days um, I can show you how to do it. For how I do it. Uh, but for now, let's check in our sweet potatoes again. So I'll turn you back down. Man overboard. Let's taste this one. So the outside color is all right. It's not too great, but it's cool. Some of it. Let's take it a taste. So that's okay. It's um, there's kind of a it needs to be cooked some more. The inside is a little bit hard still. So 
So just let that go. I'll probably have the soup actually before I eat the sweet potatoes anyway. I'm hearing these sounds and I don't know if it's coming from behind me, like someone's gonna come in the door, like my, my wife or something if she's finished work or, um, or what, but it was from outside, there's like a car stereo there. Okay, so um, what else is left? Oh, uh, coriander, cilantro, everyone, Danielle. This is coriander. Or cilantro. So I'm just going to wash this in here. So in terms of my, uh, my personal like our personal stock supply that I like to have. Um, cilantro is definitely one of those herbs that it's uh, to keep to, to keep some in your fridge. Like fresh cilantro, uh, dried cilantro, it tastes completely different than fresh cilantro. So that's one of those things where I would rather I would rather spend more on fresh cilantro rather than dried cilantro because it's it's almost like two very different ingredients. It's very, very different. Okay, so the pot is back up to a boil. Um, I'm gonna turn the sweet potato thing down because it's starting to get colored, but the inside isn't cooked yet. So I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. So cilantro is washed. I'm gonna cut a couple of green onions, spring onions, some people call it scallions. So that I'll, I'm going to add in the green onions and the cilantro at the same time. And I like to add these at the end because they have, they have a ton of like aromatics to them. So if you add it at the end, they retain all that uh, scent and flavor rather than being cooked away. So I'm just going to cut this and you can make a take a look. And the battery is going to die again. Just give it a nice little rough chop, as fine chop as you want. Again, this is just for me, um, so it doesn't really matter. Let's give a soup one last taste before we add these things in. So that, to me, tastes super weird. Something, uh, if I had lemon juice, I will, I will add the lemon juice to it, but I don't have it. Uh, so instead, I'll actually add uh, some tomato paste. That might fix it. So what I mean, what I mean by weird is, um, I don't know. There's something about it that <clears throat> I feel it lacks some body. So if you have some pasta shells or some rice kernels, you can just add that straight into the soup, and that that actually that's that's what's weird. I think I think it's a little bit too thin for me. So I think I would have liked to bring down the water. Um, use less water while blending it or thicken it up by adding some pasta or rice or something like that. Uh, oh, yeah, soy sauce. And if I had soy sauce, I would add it very much so because like the umami as in the miso, soy sauce is a huge umami hit. And I would have loved to add soy sauce to this to additional season it. So if you can add some soy sauce, uh, less water, add some pasta shells or pasta, whatever pasta you like. So three modifications you can make to this.
So let me just add in um, these greens now and take everything off the heat. Or take the soup off the heat at least. Okay, soup is off. out and have a taste. That's getting there. I'm going to add some more salt and rosemary to it. So some, this is just dried rosemary. So dried rosemary and fresh rosemary. Um, again, if, if you can buy fresh, I would recommend going with fresh, but dried rosemary isn't too far off like the cilantro is compared to the fresh one. And if you want like a, a dip to the sweet potato thing, then I highly recommend um, the spicy miso ketchup that I made in an earlier video. Um, but yeah, so I think that's it. Let me just take some out. So like I said, I'm going to have the soup first because the sweet potato is going to take some time. And I'll just take ladles some out here. So here's some soup with uh, leftover vegetables and leftover can of chickpeas. Um, that's all right. So let's have a taste. It's 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 doable. My mind, my it's not mind blowing. Uh, but again, I would add the three adjustments of soy sauce, uh, soy sauce. Pasta shells and whatnot. I'm also going to add olive oil to this actually. And as well as if you have nutritional yeast, which we used in the last video, I think, or in the, in the broccoli cashew video. So just add in some olive oil. That should make it a lot better actually. Oh, too much olive oil. Okay, whatever. <laughs> so yeah, so add some nutritional yeast, add some pumpkin seeds, uh, go nuts, just use whatever you got. All right, but I'll see you next time. Uh, and hope you guys um, have a good day. If you do have any canned beans like that, that's an easy way to make any type of soup real fast. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Namaste.